The goal of the Nora Project is to support humanity scholars in their interpretation of literary works. This video demonstrates our first user interface prototype, NoraViz, with a collection of 300 letters from Emily Dickinson to her sister-in-law Susan. Let's pretend that I am a scholar interested in the patterns of erotic language in this collection, the topic of much debate. In simple terms, I need to find letters that I classify as hot, contrast them with letters that are not hot, and try to understand what characterizes each of the two groups. First, I see the list of documents available. Clicking on a document title loads the document, which I can then read and rate by clicking on one of the checkboxes. Bright red is for true, hot in this case, and black is for false or not hot, with a range of five values. Once a document has been manually rated, a circle of the same color appears next to its title. I keep rating letters in the same manner for a while. until I get a balanced set of hot and not hot documents, here 20 of each. This will serve as a training set for the data mining classifier. Using the menus, I start the analysis. After about a minute, the results of the classification are returned. Each document that had not been rated manually now has a colored square representing the likelihood of being a hot document. Bright purple means that the data mining suggests that the document is hot. Black squares mark documents likely to be not hot. The number in this column indicates the probability ratio of being in one class versus the other. Let's look at some of the bright squares. I click on the title and read the letter. Some words are highlighted in color based on the results of the data mining. Bright colors mark the words that are common in hot documents, and black ones are common in the not hot documents. I can acknowledge or reject the suggested classification by selecting the rating that I think is appropriate. I can sort the list of documents by predicted hotness to first review the documents at the top of the scale. Or here, I can review the list of the words suggested as possible indicators. At the top are the words suggested as most likely indicators of hot documents, and at the bottom are the words indicative of not hot documents. If I click on a word in the list, for example, heart, I can see which documents include that word and read the documents. We believe that this coordinated display of word indicators document titles, predictions, ratings, and full text allows users to easily switch between the tasks of reading, rating, reviewing suggested classifications, and trying to understand what makes a document hot or not. Of course, the same interface can be used for any question that requires classification. If metadata at the document level is available, I can visually explore it with a different view, a scatter plot. Each dot still represents a document. By default, the x-axis shows the estimated date of the letters from oldest to latest. The default y-axis is the number of words in the letter. So I can see that the longest letters were written early on. I can also see that they are bright purple, so possibly hot. But overall, I don't see a general pattern linking hotness with time or length. In the Preferences tab, I can change the X and Y axis to any other attribute available. Or I can change the dots themselves. For example, I can make the size of the dots proportional to the number of lines ending with dashes, a controversial characteristic of the Dickinson letters. I can see that the use of these dashes was particularly common during this time period. Some seem to be hot, but it is not a strong correlation either. 
While analyzing the scatter plot, I can continue rating the documents.